Euthanasia is spreading rapidly around the world. There are proposals to either legalize or expand euthanasia on almost every continent. And although you may not think the issue affects you, it's worth taking a few minutes to learn more about the topic. Tom Bortier teaches at a university in Belgium. And if you'd have asked him 10 years ago what he thought of euthanasia, he would have said that he hadn't given it much thought. And yet one day in 2012, all of that changed. His wife took a call from the hospital informing them that Tom's mother had been euthanized the day before. His mother had been physically healthy, and so why did this happen? The diagnosis was severe depression. It's easy to see how this can lead down a slippery slope. And that's why almost every country in the world currently prohibits euthanasia. It's legal in only a handful of countries and US states, but there is a push in many others to legalize the practice. To get an idea of what euthanasia might look like if legalized, let's take a look at countries that have already done so. Belgium legalized euthanasia in 2002, and since then we've seen several things happen. Euthanasia advocates pushed for the law to cover more and more cases. In 2014, they removed any lower age limit for euthanasia, allowing children now as young as nine to be euthanized. Recently, advocates have presented proposals allowing euthanasia for those unable to express their wishes. Unsurprisingly, the number of cases goes up every single year. In 2003, there were 235 cases. By 2018, the number had risen tenfold to almost 2,500, including three children aged 17, 11, and 9. 58 people were euthanized on the basis of an advanced declaration, a document stating the conditions under which someone would like to be euthanized. In 25 of those cases, they made the request more than two years before it was carried out. It included one case in which the request was made almost five years before. And so when the doctor euthanized those individuals, they were unconscious. The reasons for euthanasia vary. The fastest growing reason was a combination of conditions associated with aging. Almost half of those people were not expected to die in the near future. Although the law requires that requests be voluntary and well considered, in 61% of cases, the patient was euthanized less than one month after making the request to the doctor. In Belgium, the qualifying conditions are being rapidly expanded. The number of cases increases year on year. And the same is true in other places that have gone down this path. Take a more recent example, Canada, which enacted federal legislation allowing what it euphemistically calls medical assistance in dying, or MAID. A recent federal report states that just three years after legalization, euthanasia now accounts for one in every hundred deaths in Canada. One person euthanized every three hours. In the Netherlands, euthanasia accounts for one in 25 of all deaths. The laws of Belgium, Canada and the Netherlands stand in stark contrast with international law, which clearly protects every individual's right to life. This language was written into our fundamental human rights treaties in the wake of the horrors of two world wars, because life is precious and our dignity does not diminish with illness or pain. Yet when we dilute these fundamental ideas, we, even if inadvertently, suggest that some lives are no longer worth living. And once we start down that path, there really is no logical stopping point. So why do people push for euthanasia? The main argument is autonomy, the idea that we are free to do what we want. And it's true that patient autonomy is an important concept in medicine, but it's not absolute. No one would consider it a good thing if a person wanted to have their leg removed for no medical reason, and the doctor cooperated because, well, that's what the patient wanted. The reality is that we are not completely autonomous. Euthanasia affects not just the person in question, but the doctor of whom it's demanded, the family members left behind, and others in society who may then feel pressured. How should we respond? Pain and suffering are difficult issues to address, but modern palliative care provides real options. Its experts in this area 
along with organisations representing disabled people who are some of the leading opponents of euthanasia laws. They know that it is counterfeit compassion to offer death as the best option for people in pain. Ultimately, we have to ask ourselves, what kind of society do we want to create? Because history will judge us on how we treat the most vulnerable among us. So I invite you, join the growing community seeking to end euthanasia and affirm the inherent dignity of every person. Go to affirmdignity.org today to find out more and to sign the Affirm Dignity Charter.